Joseph Hudson, a young English toolmaker from Birmingham, had one big fascination, and that was to make whistles. Fascinated by whistles, Hudson set on a quest to make his own handmade whistles. He even went on to convert a tiny washroom inside his rented house into a whistle-making workshop. Let's find out in this video how this tiny little object has a great story behind its making. Inspired to create a perfect whistle, Hudson kept experimenting with different materials and shapes. And finally, he created the Acme City Brass Whistle. Guess what? It was used by a referee in the English Football Association Cup between Nottingham Forest and Sheffield. Now, before the invention of whistles, referees were not an active part of the game. They would stand at a spot and wave a handkerchief to regulate the game. So for the first time, people witnessed how a whistle was used to regulate a football match. This piqued their curiosity about this instrument. Now, whistles had become a popular tool, but still, they were not world famous. Hudson's real claim to fame came in 1883, when he saw an advertisement by the Metropolitan Police of London. They were looking for a new noisemaker that could replace their old wooden hand rattlers. Hence, Hudson began hunting for a distinctive sound that could attract attention. He wanted it to be louder than the hand rattlers, which could be heard only up to 400 meters. And his search ended on the day when Hudson accidentally dropped his violin. The sound of the crash of the violin's bridge and the strings hummed a dying note. And voila! Hudson found the perfect sound right there. Immediately, Hudson rushed back to his whistle lab, added a pellet into his whistle and tried blowing into it. The sound was so loud that it could be heard over a mile. So that's how the world's first official police whistle was born and is still used by the London Bobby as a memory. Soon, the workshop in Hudson's spare washroom became the world's biggest whistle manufacturing company called J. Hudson & Co. Later on, Hudson added a magical ingredient to his Acme whistles, the P. Hudson's Acme P whistle was capable of being heard in a stadium, drowning in the sound of thousands of cheering fans. Hence, this new modification proved to be even more helpful for the referees to alert players, gather attention to a foul and intervene in conflicts. But what if we told you that the same whistle has caused a riot once? Yes, you heard it right. The incident happened during the 1984 pre-Olympic basketball game between Argentina and Brazil. During the play, Ron Foxtrot, a basketball referee, saw a foul and blew his Acme P whistle. But the P in the whistle chamber malfunctioned and he could not stop the play. This caused a riot among the fans sitting in the audience. After this incident, Foxcroft decided to create his own whistle that did not depend on a P and was less likely to malfunction. This marked the entry of Fox 40, the second largest whistle manufacturer and the only competitor to J. Hudson & Co. Fox 40 immediately took over the market because of its reliable whistles. Now, was this the end of J. Hudson & Co? Of course not. After all, the Hudson were the ultimate inventors. Soon, Hudson launched a tornado. The Tornado 2000. This new whistle was more efficient in making a sharp sound, tearing through the auditorium filled with hundreds and thousands of cheering fans. Hence, the World Cups, UEFA Champion League matches, FA Cup and all other sports leagues started using the tornado whistles to make some noise. In 1989, Hudson even launched the Acme Tornado Range, consisting of six types of P-less sports whistles 
with high, medium and low frequencies for every sport. They also patented the same so that no new competition could tackle them ever again. Hudson always believed in his dream, the dream to create a perfect whistle. And even when Hudson's idea was replicated by a competitor, he kept on making innovations to his whistles. He learned from his mistakes and kept on improving. He always wanted to outperform his own ideas and never failed to keep the user's convenience in mind. Hudson's invention is now more than 150 years old, but his company is still the world's largest manufacturer of whistles. Did you notice what was the key to the success of Hudson's whistles? Did the hustle of the whistle inspire you? Do let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget to visit the Npower website to learn more about entrepreneurship. Happy learning!